Hello and welcome everyone to the Wood from the Trees podcast. This is episode two and I'm here with my darling wife and I'm here with the famous, the world travelled. <laughs> just, just, just home from Milan. Am I not your darling? I- you are my darling. Oh yeah, okay. We'll my, my darling, darling Alan producer, Clark. Darling producer, producer, Alan Clark. Okay. And then Colin there, making sure that everything's right, technically. <laughs> David, how's your first week been in the world of podcasting? Very exciting. Very exciting. Tell us some of the messages you've got now over the last few I weeks. got positive messages. And the most surprising one was it was a lot of women. Right. Amazed. A lot, there's a lot of unicorn women out there. And uh, I salute you. I salute you. And they were all asked. There was loads of people asking. Men, women. Because I was given my backstory last week, I suppose. Um, they wanted to hear Vicky's side of it. When you, you, you sound like you were surprised that there was a lot of women. Like, would, would your DMs mostly be men? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What percentage of your followers would be male? Um, on Snapchat, it is 7% women. On Instagram, it's 17. It's gone up to 23 now. Wow. Yeah. And on Facebook, I don't know. Is that because you brought out candles? I was trying to bring out candles for Valentine's. But like everything I tried to do, I'm too late for everything. <laughs> And I had wanky candles out before and I got in trouble with the spell and I had it spelled someone else was doing it the same way. So copyright and I changed them. Now there's two E's. Wanky. <laughs> Wank, Vic, they're Vicky's favourite. Vicky, that, they were Vicky's show idea. Them. They were Vicky's idea, weren't they? Vicky said, you should bring out wanky candles. No, I, when did I say that? <laughs> Jesus. Pull this in because I pulled, I didn't get the right. That's it. That's it, Vicky. Yeah, so they're out now and they're for sale and they're flying out. I brought you down to. What what uh, scent are they? I just asked the ladies to make them smell like berry and I call them gooseberry gobble. There's no actual scent for a gooseberry, but I liked it. It's, it rhymed with gobble. Gooseberry gobble. <laughs> and they're all gooseberry gobble. Yeah, I'll see how these ones sell and I might get strip club fresh next. Strip club fresh? <laughs> I, t- I like the idea. <laughs> Jesus, how are you married? I just don't get it. Vicky, you're very welcome to the... The Thank ne- you. You're welcome to the nest. Thank you very much. There's it's no need to be here. nervous. You are a little bit nervous. I am. You? I'm terribly nervous. But what are you nervous about, though? What 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 is it that's making you nervous? Is it talking? <laughs> I think so. Is yeah. it? Because yeah. you're always the you're always in the background, but behind every good man is an even better woman. Thank you. <laughs> and I'd say she shamed me. I'd say the 23 <laughs> percent of women watching his stories are going, "How in the name of God is she with him?" They're definitely all watching for Vicky. So there's a certain. Um, percentage of people that watch me for the machines and what we do there and right. then there's a certain percentage that just want to see what goes on at home let's go right back to the start where did you meet oh Vicky I'll give that to you because um, she <laughs> blanked me I did I did um, uh, it would have been in Port Leash we, I was out with friends and I was after getting a taxi from Camros and I was waiting on my friends to come and I said I'd go into the local pub kind of where we always kind of met up and um, they weren't there. They were they were coming on into the town and I stood outside and David must have been listening to my conversation on the phone because I was there to one of my friends. Uh, oh, in a pervert. It sounds a bit freaky, it but It sounded, go on. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> anyway, he turned around. I was after saying, I'm just after getting my taxi from Camros and then literally he turned around and he goes, hey, <laughs> like... <laughs> where are you coming from, from cameras? And I was like, um, my home place. I'm like, who the hell are you? And now we were very, very cocky. We were. But a bit of context. You were outside the door. <laughs> I went out. It was the smoking area. And I seen this smoking hot young one out in the smoking area. I don't smoke, but you're not going to not go over. And when she was on the phone, she said she was from cameras. I said, I'm from cameras. I have yeah. to find out who this one is. But anyway, you had no, you, you didn't know me right. and you were like, you're not from Camros. And I said, no, I'm from Camros. And I said, I'm from Clonan and Camros. And he goes, oh, no, no. if I, if you were from Camros, I'd know you. And I said, well, do you know David Knowles, my father? And he goes, oh, yeah, I do. And I said, I'm a daughter of his. <laughs> and he was like, does he have children? And that was kind of it then. But he said to me, stay there and get in a, a drink or. Yeah, I was going yeah. to get my drink. And uh, just stay there. And literally he walked in and my friends came around the corner and they were like, let's go to the Laney's. And off I went. She fucked off. I don't, I don't blame you. And, yeah. I, and then afterwards I was there, oh yeah, 
Fucking prods. Don't want to hang with the Catholics. That's uh, all that's wrong there now. On a scale of one to ten, how bad was his flirting? Oh, no, no. Like, he, he's the type, he was the type of man that should be like, oh, this guy, you know, has an idea about himself. Obviously, <laughs> you're drawn to that. All right. But I kind of, I was in Carlo at the time and it was just kind of home for the weekend and I had no real interest, you know, kind of way. But, but very, he, came, he came across very confident. Didn't oh, he? very confident. Yeah. And that's interesting because I'd say you were a bag of nerves on the inside, were you? Or were you? Were, at that stage, were you in that your was, confident phase? That was phase, when or? I was, every, every man pretends to be confident. Yeah. You know, when you walk over to it, of course you're shitting yourself, but you, if you don't get anywhere unless you pretend to be confident. Yeah. You know, fake it till you make it. But it was only afterwards, about two or three months later, <laughs> I was in I was in the local pub in Mount Rath and um, I was actually after meeting uh, David's brother, Mark, and we actually started seeing each other, David's brother and I. But I didn't know. Huh? Shame. Yeah. Yeah. What? Crazy. Yeah. yeah. He started seeing his brother? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so... The baby brother. This is awkward at the Christmas we, table. No, never. Um, that is the... No. No, it's not. Listen to the fucking story, Kat. (laughs) (laughs) But um, no, it's crazy because I seen David, like the the get up, (laughs) walking into the pub. Get up. (laughs) You were very eccentric the way you... She remembers everything I remember. The hair was spiked on one side, like you should see it. But anyway, and I was like, that's you. You're the guy, you know. But anyway... In the meantime, I started seeing Mark, but never until Mark introduced us. I was like, oh, my God, do you know? But I actually kind of, I suppose, got on really well with you because when I'd meet up at the start of, you know, on a Friday night when we'd come home or whatever, and I'd be waiting for, for David and Mark and them all to come in, I'd be more so talking to you. And we just got on really well, you know. Did he stand out in your mind that night or was it was it just another lad trying it on? No. Or was there something? I, I always got on, I like the, we always had good conversation mm. and, you know, and he, I think, even I though think I was. She's seen through it. She's seen through, I, I was only out because everyone else was out. Yeah. You know, and he was fed up at the bar, you know, and I was just like, at the time, I suppose I just thought, oh, look, I'm seeing, you know, a chap here or whatever. And it's a case of having to meet up or whatever. And you'd be go- you'd be going back to Carlo then, and, and that would be it. Like it was kind of just one of those kind of. And then after about eight weeks, I think we Mark broke up with me, and then I met you about two weeks later. And he said to me, "Oh, you know, he met me," and he was like, "Oh, you know, fucking Mark. Oh my God, it's kind of." Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fuck Mark. <laughs> Not a lot of point having <laughs> your own podcast if you can't curse yeah, it. Fuck that no, piece of was, shit. He was like, She said, I hate you. that prick. <laughs> I did not. He said, I can't believe he broke up with you. Because you're, you're, you know, you're such a lovely girl. And like, he's fucking, he, sh- he really now, st- he's stupid, like, whatever. And uh, we exchanged numbers. Hmm. And I went on, and that was it. And then. Three okay. minutes later, you got a text. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, it was definitely that night. It was that night. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely within it was. five minutes. Yeah. But and, you won't have any of it, really. Of it. That was the start of it, really. But, yeah. But, well, at that time, we met a couple of times and I was all over the place. Like, oh, dear, I explained yeah, it so up. The, the last time. It was like coming to that stage. Like, I was at that stage where I talked about last week, everyone was falling apart. And I used to work away down in West Cork and we were gone all week and sometimes I'd come home during the week another time I was living on my own yeah. in the house and um, I always if I was really really lonely and this is how stupid I was when I was younger I'd, I'd live my life do my work and come home and whatever and then when I was really down or really lonely the only person that I'd ever think of on my phone I oh, will ring her will ring her oh if I fucking didn't message her last week I'm gonna look like a prick I can't and then I would and then she'd come in and we'd chat. And then I'd disappear for another two weeks. I was a prick. I what, really what, was. What, like what, what kept you hanging in there, Vicky? Oh. I'd say you're a carer, are you? Are you a feeder? If somebody comes to your house, do you have to feed them? No, it's like, I can't, I can't, oh, hold on now. How would you say it? Like, it's crazy because people would say, ah, oh, no, that's not true. That doesn't happen. But like, literally. It doesn't matter what people first, say. Yeah, I, well. Fuck Everyone them. is entitled to their opinion, mm. but like when I when I met David, th- even though I'd been chatting to him and all that, like I was always, I suppose I was always a, he was attractive, obviously, you know. Well, look at me, like, and I'm not seeing it, but go on anyway. Yeah, you do. But like he he broke himself down in stages, but the first night that we actually swapped the numbers and kissed that night, I'll never forget. It's back at Ken Black's in Port <laughs> Leash. Um, 
instantly in my heart. And I know you probably think that this is no, like not at smoochy, all. smoochy, no. lovey dovey. But I knew that this was the person. I don't know why I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. Because he was a good shift. Possibly. <laughs> what do you call it shifting over there? No, meeting. Meeting. Yeah. He, he was a good meet. Yeah, he was a good meet. But you don't put a tea on it, do you? He was a good meet. No, I put a tea. You <laughs> put, a, put tea. a tea Vicky's, on it. Vicky's Church of Ireland. Oh, yeah. Um, um, so you say you say meeting and well, you say meeting. I'm a bit yeah. of a bogger. Vicky, my whole life, is telling me to speak clear. That's interesting. Keys. So there was a spark. There was a, but there oh, was yeah, but, no, there was I butterflies. always knew it. But with David, because he literally was all up in the air, it was like, this can only be a friendship. So I knew that that was the way it was. So I knew that he needed time. And I gave you time. I gave you about two and a half years before we actually she did. But wow. then there was what? Yeah, no, I did. You know, I mean, when David went off to uh, the Czech Republic, I was broken. I never forget it. I never even told her. Heartbroken. Yeah, like he never told me. I had to hear it from a friend of mine that worked in the local shop that she could tell me that there was a load of them gone out and mentioned his name. My f- my heart fell. I always feel so guilty over that. And how long were you going for? A, a, a year, probably. Stop it. Yeah. What were we? Eight months. What? Yeah. Yeah. What kind of yeah. stunt was that? I just, I, look, I wasn't. It, these things came up really quick. Anytime we worked out foreign, there'd be a massive storm and you'd get that contract real quick and you'd go. And at the time, everything was falling apart. I needed money. <laughs> and it was like I wasn't thinking about anything like that. I'd only think about that when I was really down or really alone. I used to keep busy, keep working, keep trying to do something. So take us back to that day then, Vicky. You were, oh. you were working in the shop. No, no, I was in, I was in getting petrol or something. Oh. And a friend of mine just that was working there said it to me. You hear there's a load of them gone out working. And when she said David's name, I was like, oh my God, now I know why I haven't heard from him in like two weeks. But then that was normal to know. Did you have to pretend like you knew? Or were you just like, oh, sure now? No, I think... I can just imagine your heart sinking. Oh, com- yeah, completely. Not knowing can what imagine, to answer. You know, yeah, Because yeah. you're there thinking, you know, you're trying to give him space because, you know, old relationships and everything that was going on and everything. And you were thinking of yourself as well. And I was completely heartbroken. And, like, I just, I suppose, how did I get on with it? I don't know how I got on with it. I just did. And then you came home. But you rang me. It, it was actually two. There's a beeping, and I swear it's not my fault. That's it's okay. Keep her late. That's <laughs> it. Adds to the atmosphere. <laughs> um, so, remember, I was saying about that incident that I had yeah. with the the drugs, and I remember sitting in. We were staying in an old ski resort, and I was on my own. Everyone else had gone home, and I was the last one left out there. Knew no one. I was. Everyone spoke a different language, and I was sitting there, and I was like, "Oh fuck, who?" I, I was scared. I was terrified. It was a really terrifying experience. And I sat back. I didn't want to ring Greg, Gara, Barry, Mark. I only wanted to ring Vic. And it was like, oh, oh. What a dick. Yeah. Yeah, a dick. You see, this is really interesting because I don't know if I, if I just didn't pick up on it last the last time we were in here. But I just thought you went to the Czech Republic for a kind of a holiday. No, work. I didn't realise you were out there for a year and I, that, that Vicky was at home, I came home heartbroken. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know, did, did I just not pick up on that? I, I assumed it was like a holiday. Look, you're probably, you're not as bright as <laughs> people think. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't, I, I rang her and, uh, oh no, I texted you. And yeah. I, I, I remember she, she gave me no hop. So hang on a second. You, when you found out he was gone, did you contact him? Or he was gone? I had tried to ring David a couple of times and I was getting this weird tone, sure. A tone from him or a tone no, from the phone? the phone. Okay. And then it I all added it up. Yeah, it all added up then. So I literally had to like, you know, come back to, you know, my, this common ground that like, oh, you know, well, I can't really say we were seeing each other because obviously I was trying to give him space and he you didn't really want a relationship you just it was friendship and whatever and I had to come back to just like nothing and I just remember for a long long time it just it hurt my heart so you were like hoping and hoping and hoping he'd get his shit together and things would yeah happen between me and then you turn around he's gone when he went I just thought well he does not care so you know so 
like literally I had to spend all those months trying to tell myself to move on, but it was terrible. It was it was very hard. Yeah. I'm so sm- then I'm smiling he- now and it's not funny. No, no, it's a nervous <laughs> smile. Yeah. Yeah. But it um you know, I, I came home and then I had a lot of work to do. Yeah. You know, I apologized. Yeah. But it, <laughs> it did. Oh, it says but an it awful took, about it just, you, Vicky, It took though. a couple of months. Yeah, no, it, you know, because, like, I was so young when I met you, David. I was mm. only just 19, you know. Like, there's six years between us, so. And what age were you maybe. when he came back? I would have been just over, what, 21? No, really? no, 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 no. I was, we were seeing each other, not, well, like, as in friendshipy kind of. And, yeah, I, when you came back, I would have turned. I was 21, and you came back in the August or something. Mm. But then I, there was a couple of months where you were still, you know. Oh, that was that was a rough couple of months. For yeah. Me. I wasn't, it, like, I was never with, I was only with you. Yeah. It was like, I was just, I was just so, I didn't know my head for me whole. Yeah. And, and then, you, basically, it was like November or something. And uh, I had, you know, we were kind of, sorry now, just, we were kind of like, still see, you know, meeting up maybe, you know maybe once a week or something but there was nothing coming back from it and I was so tired you know yeah like mentally emotional everything so basically um one night David texted and said do you want to meet up or whatever um I think you were saying in the message your brother Sean was down or something and the house was full and whatever I'd, and I'd moved out of my house I yeah. had to rent out my house because I couldn't afford to live there so I moved back home mum and dad mm-hmm. and my house is been lived in so, and I was it's such a huge family so they're always in on the floor you know but uh, I just when I got that message I was like no, I can't not anymore so you I texted protect mode yeah. yeah so I just text back and I just said I'm sorry I can't and then you knew straight away and that was a kick in you the hole I knew. knew yeah yeah I, I, and when I got that message and I remember she was there I'm, I'm tired of this yeah I'm not dealing with this anymore I was like shit myself I, I'm terrified. I said, I fucking can't lose this one. This is the only person that's stuck with me through thick and thin. Everyone else has been, you know, fleeting. This is this is real. So that was the wake up moment. That was it. What happened then? I begged. <laughs> well, he texted me back and he said, you know, I love you. And then I knew then. Was okay. that the first time? That was yeah. the first time. That sound like, it sounds like it came out of nowhere then, did it? Like, It did. I yeah. suppose. Like but he hadn't had the talk. He weren't a couple or anything. No, no. And he just goes, but I love you. We literally were a support. We were like, literally, if anything went on in the week, David would tell me. And if I was doing anything and something came up, I would tell him. I didn't ever know how, how important that was to him. Like, you know, and I, I, I hadn't realised that she was the only person that I was telling my real problems to. Yeah. My, own, my real issues. Everything else was just a facade to everyone. But it sounds to me from outside looking in that you were kind of almost like a therapist to him was he telling you an awful lot more than you were telling him I'd say he was offloading an awful lot to you and you were I was just yeah I was listening to it all I was and I was just kind of I suppose I was trying to keep it calm was there ever a point where you said to yourself oh I'm sick of this fella's problems no never never you always wanted to hear them yeah because the more I would hear from David the more closer I would feel to him I know that probably sounds a bit gooey not at all no you know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> 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 Colin have you a book it there <laughs> no, I'm only messing Not at all No, no. it's nice It's in, Yeah it's interesting To hear that you, at, at no stage Did you ever just say Oh fuck Here's another text From this fella now No Offloading But it just shows The way men are Like we're Absolute idiots Until you get To kick up the hole and, it, it's, and you need more Than just to kick up the hole You really have to See So far forward And we don't think So far forward we don't now. All we have to do is look around us and look at our parents. And so, look what changed from that night on? Then, from that night where you, where he said, "I love you," what changed? I knew then that it wasn't just going nowhere. It wasn't just in my head because you know you're there, you know, meeting somebody and you're not seeing anybody else and you're not going out. You know, I didn't want to go out anywhere. I wanted to go was hoping that maybe he'd text and say, "Do you want to meet up tonight or whatever? What are you doing?" Or just you know to hear from him that's all I wanted but it you know it was just such a slow we were kind of stuck to each other since then yeah. after that then yeah after that that was it and I still had a lot of growing to do I was still not there yet yeah but Vicky helped me 
<laughs> my perfect date was when David say, "What are you doing tomorrow?" I'd be, I'd be off or whatever, and I'd say, "He'd say, you come with me on the machine." <laughs> and I'd love that, mm-hmm. Sit, and I'd be like tossed from one side of the machine <laughs> to the next. <laughs> but like, I was with him, and that was all of the mastered. Like until the day, I said one day, I, my the people that were in my house were moving out. They actually they weren't paying rent, and it was just it was no good to me. And Vicky was up in the house every night with my mom, my dad. Get up next morning, your uncle could be there, Vic, you know, Catholic family, you know, mammy, daddies. <laughs> front and door, out through the front door. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were watching TV one night and I just said, will, will you move? I want to move back into the house. Would you move in with me? And you nearly shit yourself. No, I didn't expect that now. And we did. You, I just mm. gave you the keys of the house and you had to clean it all up and mm. a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah. And when we moved back into the house... You done what? Two weeks cleaning. Yeah. The house was destroyed. It's bad. The house was, it? was wrecked. Yeah. It was wrecked. And we had nothing. <laughs> we, had no <laughs> we had no money. We were in the middle of, like, what did you have to do? Oh. oh like, I, I want you to imagine we moved into the house. We had no heat. I, mm. It was coming into the winter. We had no heating. We only, we lived in just the bedroom and, and sitting, the sitting room. room. And the only heating we had was the fire. And we closed the double doors going into the kitchen to try and keep the heat in. And we, we, I know my car's gone and Vicky had a little pink car mm. and we saved up enough money and we bought a little, what other car? The Peugeot off my brother. Oh yeah, that's right, yeah. And I drove the Aguila. Yeah. So I had the little pink Aguila. She had a little Peugeot. Both shit cars, right? We're both shit cars. And I'd go off to work. I'd drive in the Galloway every day, care, coming home. And Vicky, you'd take two jobs. I had, yeah, I had a good few jobs. What were you doing at the time? <sighs> Waitressing. I was waitressing. This will tell you. My my day would start off. I would go and look after a lady for two to three hours every day, Monday to Friday. Get her up or whatever, dinner, toilet and whatever. Then I would head straight to Port Leash and I'd waitress for about three hours to about three, finish after lunch. And then I would go and clean. I had several people that I used to look after. I'd go at their particular days, you know, and I'd go and I'd clean their houses. And that's what I did. I'd... Had a Sunday off and I'd do a Saturday and... And she was only like 21 or two. Mm. And she was taking on my problems, the house, and then, the cars, yeah. the bills. Yeah, and, and it was the, crazy. Uh, and remember at the end of a week, we come yeah. home on a Friday night. <laughs> and we, I'm not joking, it was so bleak. Yeah. And we count out the money. But and Vicky done, big, Vicky done all my bills. Vicky done everything, had a book and she'd sit down. She still does it. Right, and she gets the book out. She goes, right, we need to do this, we need to do that, and you have to do this many hours, and I'll do this many. And what age were you at this stage? Like, oh, you were only 21, 22? 22. I've been 26. And what age were you? 26, 27. Jesus, Vicky, like no, 22 been... years of age, sitting yeah. down, looking after his bills, put, and putting, like, going 50 50 on things. Well, yeah. Yeah. I, like, I would have been earning a lot. Oh, yeah. I was earning a lot of money, but it had so many places to go. I had so many bills, what? and I had to clear them. So we were earning as much as we can to get things sorted. Like it was, it was so hard. And how many times did we get backtracked? And you'd hear about people having money problems. When you have money problems, you're, everything's closed off for you. You could afford a new car, but you can't get finance. But you're spending 4000 a year keeping cars going. Mm. And you're always broke down. And then the house. Well, remember we got electric we, heaters that started getting cold. We oh, got electric yeah. heaters. And we ended up with a bill for 800 euro. Oh, it was huge, yeah. Ah, and we, could, we couldn't afford to get the house But we done. would be down to literally, like, working so hard. And I was painting. I was doing paint jobs and everything. Like, I literally... Like painting and decorating? Painting and decorating. Any I job was doing anything get. I could get. All cash. Yeah. Cash in hand. You know, whatever. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't care because, <gasps> you know... We weren't, you making, had, we weren't yeah. making little progress all the time. It was all, yeah. You know, you, we could see the light, but even like when it was like, God, there was dark days and you'd be counting. The, the takeaways. The takeaway. It we'd was so, so we had enough to have a takeaway. We'd be sitting there and we go, oh, yeah, get that. Yeah. That's, and we were so happy. And what were your friends doing at the time? Do you ever remember, like you were 22 and you were living with this bum and you were counting out his wages and all the money was going out and you were working your ass off. Can you remember what your friends were doing at that stage? No, because I was so busy. I was, it didn't matter to me, you know. We were focused. We were really, yeah, because, you know, 
that's what I wanted. I wanted to be, I wanted to share this with David. And that's why I didn't care. You know, I was happy to take on all that, you know. And I was and happy to just have help and have support. And ever since then, I come home and I give my wage to Vicky. If I got 30 euro a week, I'd be happy, wouldn't I? <laughs> yeah. I don't, I no, I do not use money. Like I come home every week and Vicky would say, there's 30. I'd never pull up in a shop, coffee in the morning. Now I bring my own coffee. Because like, yeah. Vicky was there, only we and saved this like much we, every week. Obviously, we have a joint account, so he has his card whenever he's like, I'm not going to use that card. I don't no. use cards. I don't like, you know, he nearly has a nervous breakdown when he has a tap. You know. <laughs> I don't agree with all that. Right. But, um. Where does your work, work ethic come from? Oh, Lord. I don't know. Um. I've never met anyone like her. Like, Vicky gets up in the morning and at half six, seven o'clock. And she will not eat her breakfast until a certain amount of dusting is done, a certain area of the house and all the jobs have to be done. She won't sit down to eat her dinner until the dinner is cleaned up after. (laughs) Yeah, but my sister's like that. That's not, you know. (laughs) What was your first job? Um, What was my first? Oh, I waitressed. What age were you? Uh, 16. Um, I was coming home from school at the weekends and um, there was a lovely little restaurant down in a village, not down in Coolerain village. And um, it was working for Hennessy's and they were, it was great. Friday night, had a few hours, Saturday and a Sunday. And oh, school house. Well, did you love it? Yeah, I did. Because I, I love, I love meeting people. That's one thing. I, I love meeting people. And, um, you know, you get your few tips and it was a few pounds because I came from a large family and, you know, you know, they didn't have a lot of money, you know. And so when I was going to school, we're going to school um, with very wealthy families we, we went to boarding school up in Westmeath and so you were looking at them wearing their nice runners and their nice trousers all named and sure mum and dad were trying to bring us into pennies in late August to get our casual clothes together to bag them off and send us off to school and so I just had this hunger to want to do a little bit better so I remember just saying to dad I want to go down and ask can I get a bit of you know weekend work and sure daddy was like don't think I think I was the first in the family and there's four ahead of me to do that, you know. And um, so he was he brought me down and yeah, they said to me, I have a bit of work for you. And I'd I say to, if there was any tips to be had, you got them. I know we shared them out. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> we shared them out. But I'd have to walk home, you know, sometimes. Um, maybe not all the way, but dad could be off doing taxis or whatever, because like that daddy was trying to send us all to school and uh it all depended on where he was. He mightn't be able to get me when we finish up around half twelve. So I often walked in the dark from Coolerine, maybe up to the up to the cross, past the sawmills, you know. But never minded, because you know I had my few pound, and you know, so that was my first job. I liked it. They're really Pe- interesting stories. People, like. I have this thing that I say. Um, you know, like Martin is my second best friend and, you know, you know, my 13th. But Vicky's always going to be my first. And we we are <laughs> friends. Like, we are friends. Like, I, I talk about everything to Vicky. Colin, we're going to need a bucket here next week. No, but it's, <laughs> but, but, every, but, but it's like, it's the same thing as I was speaking about last week. Now, Vicky looked after me when I needed her. And things change again for a man when she had... Lily, that's a whole other ball game, and I didn't even get it until Lily was born. Didn't understand it at all. And the minute Vicky had Lily, then that's the whole rever- it reverses. There, she's my responsibility, and I have to look after her, and I have to look after Lily, and I have to look after the kids, and my time, and my having fun, and my going out. None of that matters. You have to look after them. How do you feel about that, Vicky? I'd say you're very, very independent, like in. Yeah, you course. don't want to be you don't want to be minded either. No, I don't want to be minded. I like to be independent. I like to have my own money coming in. Um, but going back to like David minding me and all that, like David has a very placid nature. Um, obviously, he's, you know, jokes a lot and whatever, you know, but um, he would have been brought up where he would have seen his mom and dad, which I think is lovely. Like sit on each other's knee, you know, she'd be sitting on his knee and they'd be snuggling and cuddling and kissing. And like, if you go up to David's home place, probably tonight, his mother would more than likely be sat on the side of the t- chair 
snuggling into his dad and David would be the very same with me. You know, like we're... I love cuddles. There's a lot of love he, in that house. It, oh, a <laughs> lot, yeah. And I, d- I didn't come from that kind no, of No, either family. did I. No, Like, no. I used to s- witness David meet his brother Gareth and Greg and literally they'd all meet up and they'd be in each other's faces you could feel their breath against <laughs> their... Fa- and they'd be hugging each other and I'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> Like, is this normal? And then I had to kind of like, you know. Get used to it. Yeah, get used I've broken you down. Oh, yeah. When Vicky's at her most mental, like when she goes freaking out. (laughs) And and I know that the longer we're with each other, this is what drives Vicky mental, is that I will just go the other way and I will just go all, ah, you're all right. You're (laughs) all right. Give us a hug. Give us a hug. Like last night, no, you were stamping around the house. You were angry or something. But the kids were freaking out or something. And I... (laughs) Put you down on the ground and tickle you and oh, yeah, try to rip your trousers <laughs> off. tried to rip my trousers <laughs> off. But going back on David saying, like, 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 that's the way he is. And like, what's lovely about all his family, all his brothers, they're all the same. They all look after their wives, their children. They just are a lovely, lovely family. And like, in fairness to your mum and dad, like, fair play to, for, to God, them. There'll be Christmas dinner invites this year. Uh, wow. No, but, you know, and so David, I suppose, just has adapted that kind of way of life, looking after, you know, his wife and his children. And like when the kids came along and, you know, we were still trying to, you know, get on and you to pay your bills and whatever. And I'd say there could have been, I don't know, maybe like hurling or something. And he'd be like, what do they need? You know, and he'd work. He'd always put in the extra hours. He's just that way. Do you we, know, we, we had to. Yeah, we, we, had, we had no to. choice. Yeah. We just had it because nothing gets done. And that's why when I talk about young men and if you're the breadwinner and you're at home minding your kids more than you should, then you're not making money. So like I feel bad for guys that are stopped from working because their women want them home all the time to help with the kids and stuff. When really deep down they have to know, yeah, look, I need to make money. Opportunity is now. Time is now. You need money now. And if I'm home, I can't make money. If I'm here, I'm losing out. This, there's, it's a no-win situation for some men. Like, we're all in a no-win situation. When I was working down in Galway, you oh, had yeah. to stay at home with Lily on your own in a house that we had been broke into a few times. You were terrified. If you used to lock the door, I had, I had put a, a chair up. Yeah, so I had the door locked. and uh, no, it, was, it was crazy. And I have my hurl beside the bed. And... The way I kind of worked uh, in my head, I thought, right, well, if they get into the house, I'll possibly hear them. I'll hear them come upstairs. The door will be locked. They'll have to get through that door. Then I'll go into the ensuite and I'll lock that door and I'll have the hurl and Lily. And sure, hopefully I'll have the neighbour that was two doors, you know, doors down and I'll be, you know, that's the way it was, you know. And I had to work. For a long, long time we on my own. We didn't with, never with got you, anywhere. With Lily, yeah. And, and I used to feel so I wanted to be with the kids. Yeah, you missed uh, Nothing that. is more important to me than hanging with the kids. But you can't do that. You can't do, you can't be both places. Yeah. You can't. You have to make a choice. Let's move on to social media now for a minute. Oh. Are you on any social media, Vicky? I used to be. I used to be on Facebook and I just got to a stage where I was fed up of looking at what you were know, you fed up of? Because you'd like you'd get into this routine where you'd start scrolling, you know. Yeah. And two you, hours have gone past. Yeah. And then you hate the world. You, well, not that you'd be seeing that people be putting up posts, checking into you know, A&E. like trying to. <laughs> yeah, A and E. You okay, hon? And yeah. DM and, me. Yeah, it was so <laughs> stupid, like you know, and um, yeah. So I had set up my Facebook page. I suppose it started like everyone else was doing, just set it up like whatever and have a Facebook page. And then I started kind of doing a little job called uh, vintage, like it was kind of a vintage wed- wedding set up kind of. Mm. I started it after we got married because we had loads of stuff seen, left yeah, over. Yeah, loads of stuff left over. And so I started doing wedding. vintage wedding wear was what I called it. And so what is that exactly? I was going into hotels and setting up um, venues for... Like the chairs and things? And no, not the chairs and things. I was literally doing all the tables set up as in like it would all be like lovely, beautiful logs with flowers on top. Wow. Real vintagey kind of um, teacups. And where did you get the logs? David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, we we did weddings up to 400 people. Wow. Yeah. You know, and I was everywhere and everywhere with my sister Tara. Right. And Tara would come with me for the day 
my parents would look after the kid. Well, I suppose, yeah, it would have been Lillian Clark. And it was nearly like a little adventure. After we'd set up, we'd head off and we'd go visit, wow. you know, the various little attractions in the area. Sometimes and that used to terrify me. So go on, you had a Facebook page anyway. Yeah. And people would contact you then or people would go to the wedding and they'd be at the wedding and say, I want that for my wedding in Yeah, and they'd pass time. it on. Yeah. yeah. You'd and get I a gig busy. from a gig. Yeah, I was busy, you know. And how, how did that come to an end then or what happened? Um, you ran out of logs. I was working in residential care at the time. Right. And in fairness to them, they were very good. I could kind of work it, tweak it, you know, that I'd have the a day off that I needed. But I needed two days, you see, by the time I did prep and we went... I mean, there was often times I was coming home at four in the morning and going to work then. You know, just David, I was using David's van. I was tra- driving his van and coming home and I was just wrecked and I was going on then to do um, Karen. And I just couldn't do it all. And then I started up with the HSE in a hospital outside Port Leash and it was, you know, full time hours. And so I didn't have that leeway. I didn't right. have, you know, because I was, I was doing three hour, three days a week, sorry, in the last place. So it just, it was one of those things. And I'd still get messages, you know, people that would have had had me two years ago and had, yeah. you know, put my name forward. But you don't take them. No, I wouldn't have time. I okay. loved it. We did love it. You know, we're just shocking busy. Would you like to go <laughs> back into it? Yeah, no, I've thought about that. I have. Um because, you know, you get to see the most beautiful locations. I mean, we went to beautiful old houses. I'd be big into that, you know. Now's a great time. There's weddings every night of the week now since yeah. lockdown. Yeah. But it's just yeah. the locations. I used to feel like I was nearly at home. I love all that, you know. Lovely. And, um, yeah, no, you w- I would, you know, but not now at the moment. Kids, uh, you know, maybe something, something to think about. So what do you think of David's social media? Um... Well, <laughs> do people come up to you and say, yeah. oh, I saw David said this or I heard him say No, that. never. No, I've never, ever had a negative experience with anybody. No, I'm no. not saying negative, but do people come up to you and say, oh, David oh, was at this and he's no. awful crack and he's I, awful. I get is, how do you put up with that lad? I'd well believe it, yeah. That's what I get. Yeah. And I'd say, well, and it's true, we are, we're chalk and cheese. Oh, chalk and cheese. I have, I am so. Her sense you, of humour. It's so. It makes me laugh. It's so bad. Yeah. So bad. She laughs. <laughs> she laughs at slapstick. The most. I go home at night, and I can guarantee she's either watching Vicar Dibley, the <laughs> Darren Buds May, keeping up appearances, or you know those old detective. I love things. it. Love it. Yeah. Like that's what she watches, and I and jokes. Like, she I, like Faulty Towers. Yeah, love Faulty Towers. But what yeah. bleeds? Unreal. What bleeds and has two legs? A dog. Half a dog. Half a dog. There you are. <laughs> I I told her that the other night. She started that. crying. And it could be a screamer. The poor dog. It could be a screamer. I'll, t- I'll tell you one that you haven't heard before. Oh, no, go on. Right. My penis was in the Guinness World Book of Records until the librarian told me to take it out. <laughs> so stupid. See, that's a great joke. Come here, Vicky. You know, are you ever... It's interesting that you have this fella at home and he's like all lovey-dovey and snuggling up mm. to you and saying, oh, come here and give me a cuddle. And then he puts a video up on social media calling you whatever he calls you. I'm not going to repeat it. Hi, what do I call her? Because I wouldn't repeat it, David, because it was wrong. <laughs> I don't know. I never call you anything. No, do you know what I mean? Where he'd be messing with you and he'd say, ah, oh, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. She was just mine. And you'd be in the story. Do you know what I, I mean? I just have to go away. Like, can I not sit on the sofa with my hair wet in my... I call it my rag. Um, I'll burn him one of these days. She <laughs> hides him. Dressing gown. Love it. It's like my rag one. I call it my rag one. And David hates it. He's like, I'm gonna, if I get that, I'm going to burn it and bin it. I think she does it because she doesn't want me to be at her. Yeah. She yeah. wants me to turn me it's off. Anti, it's, an an, it's an anti-sex gown. Doesn't work. Isn't it? But it's like when, you, when you're so used to something, you don't, you know, you don't notice these things anymore. So... With David now going around the phone and, you know, the kids and it's just, um, it's part of life, you know. But no, um, that's mostly what I get is people, lots of girls or women would come up to me and say to me about him. Um, but I've never had anything But negative. how is he so, how is he so lovey-dovey on the couch and then he's a sticker that says, fuck I your know. feelings. Yeah, crazy. What? I mean, my sister and I. That's got to do with not being lovey-dovey. My sister and I did a day from trying to do, at Christmas time it was chaotic and we all helped out. And like we were there, she's, I'm doing, you know, printing off the, invo- you know, the 
what you call it, the receipts or whatever. Mm. And Davina's packaging. And I'm like, did you put in fuck, fuck your whatever? And Davina's like, no, did you get the Bass Crow one? And I was like, imagine we're saying this. Yeah. This is normal. Did he ever really, really embarrass you anywhere? Were you ever like, oh my God, David, you can't say that. All we, the time. Can you, what, is there like, any that stands out? Like, have, since we met, that's like we, been the case. We could have neighbours, like elderly neighbours, like, you know, they'd know David's mum and uh, they'd say, how is Lil and Jim, you know, and all, and then David would say something outrageous, like they were on the sofa <laughs> at each other <laughs> last night, so they were good, they're getting on grand, you know. <laughs> and I'd be like, and you're like, what? Huh? <laughs> you know, and like he does that all the time. The, nobody, all my uncles and aunts don't even mind when they get a message from my mother. Because if I see oh. him, if I see my mother or father, anyone's phone on the table and it's not locked. He, good yeah. luck and good night. If you leave your phone down, just giving you a warning, he'll be on it and he'll have text somebody like random or whatever. I'm going down to give you a blowjob. <laughs> get ready. Yeah. So like <laughs> little sister would often text to see how she is. And David have text back poor Olan. Um, we're riding at the moment. You know? <laughs> and now they just go. Well, David. <laughs> they know it's David. <laughs> David, give her back her phone. Yeah, yeah that's exactly yeah. what happens. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's bad. Like, you've done some terrible things to people that uh-huh. way. Yeah. But that's the way we all go on. Yeah. Are you ever yeah. nervous that uh, Clark will start saying it in school or something? Um, no. The other I'm morning not. when he had the stickers. Oh, yeah. Go on. Tell us what happened there. He's heading to school with his um, water bottle. Yeah. And fuck your feelings. Sticker stuck to it. <laughs> <laughs> David, I was like, nope, nope, that's not happening. Here. What and age is Clark? He's, he's six. Yeah. And what class is he in? Seniors. Seniors. Yeah. He was heading into senior infants when I had a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles flask. Uh, he was going in with a flask that had fuck your feelings yeah. on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I Clark, love it. Thank God he wouldn't know. He doesn't know what it says. You know, he, he wouldn't have a clue. But um, I was just thinking about his poor teacher, Mr. Carroll. <laughs> Probably wondering what the hell is going on in the house. Did he get it into school? No, no, he, no he got no, it in time. Didn't. God, no. And people God. probably don't think we're actually strict enough with the kids. Yeah, we're we'll strict enough we're, now. We're, There's we're, no we're, bad language or anything like that now. And the kids do everything I ask. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Like they I come mean, across like they're really good kids. They never. Jane, Jane's wild. Is hard yeah. work. She's. Sure, where would she leave it? I don't know. She gets she's from different. David. She's different than the rest of them. Oh, she's different. Does, oh my god. She's, she's got she's your different. blue eyes, and they say they're just wild, wild blue eyes, and she's wiry. But we she, love her to she, bits. I think she's going to be the very same as Vicky. Never saying sorry or anything like that. Did Vicky never says this? sorry. I always. It's say her that. secret power. She that's, never says sorry. And that's know, most women, though, in nice. my opinion. Now, hmm? hold on now. I'm that's very... most women, in my opinion. I think that we is, do, is right? it. I thought it was just... But how do we say yeah. sorry to something? We don't really, like, in I love no, They, they, they on, start love. talking to you again and they might do yeah. something for you as a kind of a... If I wasn't the I'm, one that always, no matter whether you're right or wrong, I'd always, I would not go to bed without cuddling you or kissing you. I couldn't do it. Like, in our house, we've never had a row. We'd we, always, we have arguments. We'd have an argument as in, no, more, I always say it's a discussion because you'd come up with an idea and I'd be like, God, I don't know, you know, and then you'd be like, no, no, you're not thinking about that. And then we'd probably like <laughs> stop talking for maybe like two hours <laughs> but we're yeah. always back. But I, th- I think that's the secret though to a relationship. You don't want someone that you win the argument all the time. No. And so if it's not going anywhere, we sort of go away for a while. What happens for those two hours? You go down to the office. I go down to the office yeah. and I think, is there something that I'm doing to make this worse? Like, you don't want to win. Everyone can win. An ar- if you're aggressive, you'll win every argument. But it's mm-hmm. not about winning. It's about what am I doing wrong? Is What's her point? Let me see things from her point of view. And what do you think during those two hours? I'd be... I'd Seeding with anger. No, I'd... Festering I don't couch. like. I don't like confrontation. I don't like it. And so if I felt that, you know, I was wrong or whatever, like, obviously I'd be hurt, you know. But, no, like, we do always... We don't have arguments, so we can't really say. Look, we're going to disagree on this one. Well, I don't believe I, that. I, like, that. I, I don't. Any any time I hear a couple saying, "Oh, we don't fight," I just no, think that don't. is bullshit. No, but we, we don't. We, like, we genuinely, we have don't. arguments, and then what we do is we know how to handle them. Like, if you can, an argument will never stop. Yeah. If you just want to win that, we argument. just sit down and we just say, "Right, so we we'll just, have a cup of tea." What What's wrong? Yeah. You know, what's the story? We'll what? Figure it out. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I know my life's. If you if you focus on the negative in a relationship, and it's doomed, you have to focus on what's positive. Because everyone's batshit crazy. I'm a broken fucking ego. There's broken things about her. 
And like I think I would hate if you were in a relationship and like that's what's cool about marriage. You take marriage vows and you're like, no matter what, no matter how fucked up I am, I'm never leaving. Mm-hmm. And that gives you freedom. If for me, it gives me freedom. No matter how fucked up I know she's not going to leave. And no matter vice versa, she's not going to leave and I'm not going to leave. That's only to a certain extent. Yeah, well, of course, if I go home yeah. tonight and bait shy over. But I'm talking <laughs> as a, a couple. That's what's great about marriage. No, no matter what, we're going to stay together. We have to make this work. For the kids, we're going to try and make this work. Because nothing's perfect. Life's hard. We're always going to have struggles. Like I just say, we're, we're not too bad now, but we can be fucked in the morning. Yeah. But at least we know we'll figure it out. We've been through it. Are you ever nervous that he'll say something on his Instagram or in a podcast that you'd be like, oh, no, he shouldn't have done that? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. And I'd say, how... She you, often says that to me. How do you get away with that, David? To know. Because that would be my worst fear, that he cause upset or whatever, you know. Because, like, you know, he says anything that... I don't want to. I say what I, what I feel I'm allowed to say. Yeah, well, you, yeah. Obviously, you have to but be careful. Well, I, well, see, here's the thing about free speech. It's like, it's the most important thing in a modern society is that everyone can say what they want. And it doesn't matter if it's batshit crazy. At least you know what that person's thinking. But we're leading into a society now where everyone's afraid to say what they're really thinking and everyone's saying what they think the other person wants to hear. So nobody knows what anyone's saying. I would prefer if, just say, you come in here and you say, I hate this, that, the other. Grand, I don't agree with you, but at least I know what you're thinking. But now we live in a society where no one knows what they're thinking, where... This is why I, I, I tell you that I'm terrified of this. We're building a world for our children, okay? But all we're doing is building a prison. We're building a social prison for our kids. That's all it is. We're worrying about this, that, and the other, and we're not seeing this big thing that's coming down, total control. Totali- totalitarianism. That's all that's coming. I think, I think we should get into that in a, in a separate podcast and not kind of waste the time when Vicky is here because Vicky won't be here next week. No, but Unless you want to, Vicky. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting because it's from, you know, again, watching the stories, I'd be thinking, you know, how is she not nervous with him saying that or, you know, mm, him, him yeah. saying this, that or the other. And the other side of that at the moment is you're not allowed to say anything. You know, there's this big, massive thing with the two radio presenters this week that they're yeah. taking off the air because they read out car stickers. It's a joke. And it started from a TD saying, oh, blah, 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 these two and RT should know better. But is that getting to the bottom of the problem? It's only tipping the top of the problem, see, which is that it's low hanging fruit, in my opinion. That's a, a and it's like someone in government looking for attention. Are we talking about the actual problem and the stickers and who has them on their cars? Or are we talking about the two lads that read them out? It's, it's about that's control. It's someone up, that politician, what was her name? Kira something? I don't know. Attention. Look how virtuous I look. Let's pull down these lads for something that they're just saying. It's just a comedy sketch. It wasn't even on the radio. And then they pull them down. And what I found so interesting about it is they were starting their radio station and everyone was there. Oh, come on, lads. All the celebrities, all the RTE people. Go, come on, looking forward to it. It's going to be great. The minute that happens, which they shouldn't apologize for, and no, silence. But it's like anything when you take it out of context. You could take one sentence from this podcast tonight and turn it on its head and take it out of context mm. and it could be the worst thing in the world. But taking though, in my, this is just my opinion again and this isn't my podcast, it's yours. But I think taking the lads off air was the wrong thing to do because now we can't talk about it. No. Yeah. Now we can't get into, get, can't get into a discussion about it and because the boys are locked in a room. Yeah. And it's like, right, into the room, keep the head low, say nothing. Why can't why can't the two lads bring that TD on the radio? Challenger. And even yeah. if they're wrong, even if they say, Jesus, yeah, you're 100% right, we shouldn't have done that. It was a huge mistake. But talk about it. But the, yeah. How do we get to the, the bottom the, of the it? The masses don't agree that it was a mistake. But the people, the minority with the loudest voice, mm. even if it's a batshit crazy voice, they're the ones that people hear because they're the people in control. Like, that's why radio and RTE and 2FM are all dying on their feet. They're all dying on their feet. I found it interesting. I tried some dating apps the last week or two for the crack. And uh, there's this dating app called Hinge. And you can put in a comment or whatever on the profile. And on the top, an awful lot of girls have a thing for Snickers work pants. And, and Helly Hansen work pants. <clears throat> Plug. Coming, coming, coming soon. Watch this space. Watch this space. Big news coming soon. Um, 
And I find it really interesting that these girls can put at the top of their profile, mm, a man in Snickers pants yeah. and he won't be in them too long. Yes. And this kind of stuff. But if I put on, on the top of my profile, oh, a girl in leather Freddy pants. <laughs> and yes, I tell you what I'm doing. <laughs> I know. Um, am I allowed to get away with that? No. No. It's a double standard. It's, it, yeah. It's a double standard. And there's a lot of that. Now, I'm not making it up. There's an awful lot of girls that have a thing for Snickers work pants and actively have it on their profiles. And mm. I'm just wondering, what's going on here? Like, No, it's all, it's all crazy. It's all crazy. But again, that's... A but David's really vocal though, Vicky. Like, and you know that from... You're, you're in the background making the dinner and he's sitting at the kitchen table oh. drinking his brew beer. Yeah. Free plug. Yeah. And ten percent off. And do you ever are you ever there like mashing the spuds going, Oh Jesus, I can't believe <laughs> he's going down this route. He's going there. Or do you ever say to him, David, don't put that up? I, I'm just so used to him, you know. It, I, maybe I don't hear it anymore. I'm I'm so used to him being like that. That this is David. You and know, you know the not, irony <laughs> is um, I've done this before, people. I don't actually be on the phone a lot. So if you look at my story. 13, 13 minutes is a long day. Mm. That's a lot of links. Now, I happen to be someone that puts up a lot of content, but that would be 13 minutes. I ain't taking 50 shoots of everything. I'm just saying what I think. So there's not an, all, an awful lot of talk going into it. I'm just saying what I'm thinking. I'm just showing what's going on. If you were to look at my screen time, I bet you I would have the lowest screen time here because I don't look at a lot of stuff. Right. So when I'm... I try to spend as, I try to get quality time with the kids and Vicky. Me and Vicky try every night to sit on the couch, watch TV, just chill out, talk. Mm -hmm. We like to sit down and have a cup of tea and chat. We plan everything together. We yeah. talk through everything together. Before Christmas, if I hadn't had Vicky, God, doing the orders and stuff. Yeah, it looked intense, yeah. Like there was nights I would work until three. You'd get up at three in the morning and then work until yeah. the kids were going to school. You're doing shifts. Yeah. yeah. In the office. Yeah. yeah. Because the year before was crazy and we, we really missed out on time with the kids. We weren't expecting it. Yeah. You know, we were, we were struggling. And this year now, we don't do go down to the office until the kids are in bed. Yeah. I, I put the kids to bed and we, we can take as much time together with the kids as possible. They all got their little bit of time, you know. Mm. Um, it, it's, is there, it's busy. Is there a time like, do you, do you have a time like say by seven o'clock or eight o'clock? That's it. The kids bed? Well, no, it's couch time and it's. No, well, the, the kids have their own, they're in and out. Clark's playing with his cars, Nils, you know, whatever. Yeah. Jane's trying to jump off the sofa, whatever. Jane's pulling the roof down. Yeah. 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 And usually we always have a late dinner in our house. I always have it late because David would be coming in from the wood. So we'd always have dinner around half six, seven. So it's clean up then after dinner. And then it's kind of like put on something on television or whatever they want to do. And then around eight, it's bring Jane down to bed. And then they get to half past eight. They have to have their teeth brushed. And David will do, right, time to go to bed now. So he'll do story time with Clark. And then he'll tip down to Lily then and give her a little bit of time. You know. Is Clark absolutely obsessed with him? Oh, he loves his daddy. Yeah. yeah. But you're like, he's the most manly daddiest daddy yeah. there has ever been. Like, a, dad, kids for, are such a pleasure though. For daddy to have those machines, like, yeah. it has to, he has to be like a superhero. I look at the kids in fairness. Like, David is a great dad, you know. Like, like my, he plays, he literally rolls around the floor. I'd be like, what the fuck? You get up off the floor, David. And he's rolling around the floor with Clark and they're on the ground, on their knees with cars. The, the only person that has, we, I feel myself, I probably haven't said this to you, but we've probably done a 360 now, as in... A 180. Back to when we were working really hard. The only part... The kids don't suffer now with my time. It, me and you don't get an awful lot of time. No. Because right. once the kids go to bed, then it's down to the room and it's orders and returns. Yeah. And, okay, okay. And then we get an hour. Vicky yeah. will come down and go, come sit with me for an hour. You're the victim of your own success, really. I'm trying to change it. I'm trying to change things around. I'm trying to get help doing things because I can't do it all on my own because you can't do everything. And who's the boss with the kids? <laughs> I'd be the boss but David is great for the discipline. Like literally. <laughs> so you're the boss it's but crazy. he's the discipline? Yeah. What? Like Jane, How does that work? Jane she will tells me when to me. discipline. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, she calls me. She has a special David. I hear it. David! <laughs> get up here! <laughs> and I'd hear I told you, I told you I was going to call daddy. No, but he's got a really good way of coming down to them. You know, you know. Boom, 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 boom. I can hear the footsteps. I never shout at him. No, he never shouts. Never. Right. So, so, and I have a way of intimidating them. Yeah. 
Go on. So I've tell no us. control over Jane. 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 No, because no. I can't. She can't understand me. But I'll just kneel down and I'll go. Right, I'm. I'm awfully, awfully disappointed in yeah. you. You say I, that to Jane? No, no to Clark. Clark. Oh, right. yeah. yeah. And they would really take it to heart. It, it, it would kill them. And when I, upset, you know, when I say upset. I'm going to, dis- if I say I'm going to take your tablet or I'm going to not let you watch TV or you're not playing soccer. or you're not, That I'll, is it. That is it. Right. For a week. It could be like it'd be real bad. Like, a week? Yeah, 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 yeah a, week a week is the worst. Yeah. A week? And yeah. they, they, if that was me that said it, Lily, I'm taking your tablet. You can't be on that now. You're off uh, a week. I would get... Hold on now, mommy. That's not fair. And the minute David says it, she'd be like, "Okay, Dad, that's okay," you know. And she'll go on a little merry way because she knows that she's been bold. And and would it last the week, or would you give it back I on Wednesday? Wouldn't. They wouldn't yeah. take it unless I give it back to them. And um, they would. What, ask. what would warrant that now, as a matter of interest? Giving cheeks to Vicky just, or upsetting Vicky? Yeah. I, have, I I don't care if they pull the house down. Vicky right. minds about. I. Oh. So if they're cheeky to you, Vicky, that's it. No tablet for the week, and yeah, the like week and a week David means the week. Will, David will come in and he'll say. Did you ever see me talk to your mummy that way? And they're like, no. And I say, well, what do you, why would you think that you can talk to her like that? Show disrespect. Like you, you have to show respect to your mum and whatever. And they would like, you know, literally be looking him in the eye, you know, realising, okay, I, I've been bold. I've whatever, you know, but it's just complete respect. And when, when they were growing up, like what? methods did you use I know this is probably for another podcast altogether but was there a bold step or a bold corner yeah there was a bold corner in the old house for Lily Clark didn't really care no Clark no he just goes into it and has the crack stay there and just sit there (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah yeah, no I don't know Lily comes across and I've never met Lily in person but she comes across very like you I think she's is she is she quite caring she no you know what it is she as I'd say and it probably sounds terrible to say these words David's mother will never be gone, as in, you know, because she is the very same as David's mummy, Lil. Like, she will be all, you know, touching her face, kissing and hugging, yeah. wants to be held. She's like David like that. But she's so, she just is so like Lil when she, she the way she goes on, you know. I remember once in, when Vicky first got pregnant, I wanted boys. I, and when Lily was born, I was like, oh, God, this is going to be the girls. Terrifying. And these girls are so loving. You know, she's very she's loving. so loving. Cuddling. And more like, cuddles for you. Oh, more yeah. cuddles. You can't yeah. have enough cuddles. But she's uh, very on David's side of the family. And But then you have people say, oh, she's very like you. But I just see David, you know. I mean, it's amazing how you see different people and your children. Mm. Yeah. But um, no, the, she she would be very caring, like her granny Lil. Lily Cuddy, would she? Ah, she is. <laughs> what would be the last thing that she's done now to get no tablet for the week? She this morning. You, she, this morning. The yeah. tablet was taken this morning. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> Go on, tell us. I was down doing some work and then I heard the David. <laughs> <laughs> and once I walk in, that's it. Once she's called me, I have to I have to mm. follow through. It was be- simply because I said to her, Lil, you're going to have to get dressed early now because she want, she's on midterm. So she wants to stay at home and not go anywhere in pyjamas, whatever. And I said, you have to get dressed now because I said I have to go and I have to do the post and I need to get in before 12 and she started to question me and I said like when do you question me you know what kind of questions like why do, like can you not do it and I'm there excuse me like who are you to question me you'll do as you're told you'll do what I'm doing and that's it and anyway she sta- stayed kind of speaking over me and I said David <laughs> like that and he goes what's going on and straight away just walked in like that said, um, tablet was gone tablet's gone and you know what the gas thing about is she's so respectful for that because like she'd say to me, I'd say to her, Lil, do you just look up? And she'd go, but I can't go on your phone because like I'd be look, looking at like social, you know, she'd be like looking at something on Roblox. Yeah, Roblox. And she'd go, that'd be like being on my tablet. And I'd be like, yeah, you're right. Actually, I forgot about that. You were right, you know. Yeah. And, and so you're going against daddy's wishes then. And she, so she'd, and in fairness to her, she'll always come and say to me, but even if she's not been you know, punished for being bold or whatever. She'd come and she'd say to me, ma'am, um, can I go on my tablet? And I always say, I love to hear you. I don't want to ever see you going around with it in your hand without asking, you know, because mm. they spend so much time on these things. So will it last then till next Friday or will it? Will you cave in on no, I don't cave Wednesday? In. No, it's up on top of the, the press. It won't be touched. Regardless. Regardless. Even if she comes to you on Wednesday and she says, I'm really, ask. really sorry. She won't, she'll know not to ask. All right. Yeah, no, That's interesting. Now, hey, 
when they're 15, 16 years of age, they could be cunts and I won't have any control over David, them. you can't choose that word. Well, Jesus Christ. It could. Would you you have to control what you can control. What really interests me is that he's always taken the mickey out of your bread pudding. And you seem really proud of it when you're making it. Like you, you oh, look like like, the bread and butter button. Yeah, you look like you're putting it. Is that one of your specialities no, or what? She made it once and she'll never make it again. I made it once and David calls it a Protestant dessert. Yeah. You know, um, but it's actually really nice. It looks nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when we were at school, we always got bread Trade. and butter pudding, especially, <laughs> especially with custard. It's lovely. It is lovely. It's not. You're just. It's, uh, it looks like dog shite. And were you proud of it that night? Absolutely. What's, what's your favourite meal to cook? <laughs> my sister's going to laugh at this one um, I love cooking chicken I love a roast chicken yeah yeah. stuffed I love I, I like to kind of do a kind of a Sunday dinner kind of a thing twice a week nice yeah be you know. roasties and everything and we all sit around the table and chat about our day and yeah does David cook yeah no he does yeah he does I'd say to him you do the lunch you know do lunches or whatever he'll, he'll do <laughs> toasties he does amazing toasties do you have butter on the I'm, outside of them? I'm a super cook. Only Vicky gets so annoyed because I make such a mess. Yeah, David, he he doesn't do it in one area. He drags the whole lot around the kitchen. Do you know? Yeah. Um. So that's how David... But I still... We, we always have a nice lunch when David... But the drives. most important thing is I don't want the episode to end without... Just explain how good I am in bed. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> you, know what they, you, you know what they say though, the ones that talk about it are no good at it. Oh, I'm yeah, different. You're right, I'm different. Alan. Yeah. I'm different. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, you know, for them two or three minutes, I am just. <sighs> Let's just wrap up. Lovely. David, what do you Alan, think of Vicky? I, tell tell I, her what you think of her and what you think about her. Everyone knows that I love Vicky <laughs> so much. Why? She's my, because she's my best friend and I wouldn't have anything without her. She saved me. She saved my life. She does all the time. And I know that if shit goes wrong in the morning, which it, it all could, and she's there for me. And I've asked her to do things for me that I know deep down you don't want to do. But I promise you, I'll make it happen. And she just goes with it. Like this sounds thing. like narco stuff altogether. No, but the, like, the, the house My enemies thing. are after me, send me money. <laughs> <laughs> Tinder but, swindler. But we have. Remember, like we went through so much hardship. <gasps> and remember I used to say, you... I, we get that wedding they We can. get that wedding done Yeah Like the night before our wedding We, we had that pet fern We had nothing In our pockets Yeah It was crazy Like we had a fantastic wedding And not to, not about to piss in Yeah Yeah There's no salt for an egg As they say Yeah <laughs> So But it was We just worked You worked So Seven hard Seven yeah. days a week yeah. So hard Vicky what do you think of David? Um He's Great in bed David's, I don't know, look at, you know. Would you show, <laughs> show up for a minute? Let's keep the small Mickey to one side now because look at ev- everyone has their, uh, everyone has their downsides. But what do you think of him? I just think he's, I think he's amazing really, you know, because no, not like in fairness to you, you've had to, I suppose, like educate yourself in all of this in social media and all that, like, you know, and pick up, like, I mean, there's things that you get sent and you're like, oh, I don't know what, what do I do there? You know, and. You're learning every day and you just don't, you don't give up, you know, and you just, you know, stay wanting to learn. And you're obviously like amazing provider, you know, you're a great dad, a great husband. Um, and I've enjoyed every bit of it with you. Hmm. And she make a great I can't, I can't wait to, I like, and I don't wish our lives away, but I, I look forward to when we have our time, you know, like not retirement or anything like that, but just that we get back to what us. we have. Yeah. To know. I, I don't mean that like I, I yeah. just don't wish my life away. but you'll still be very young when that happens she yeah, will well <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's great to hear that he's a good provider no he is outside the bedroom yeah. because it's making up for things in the bedroom that he can't provide for yeah no look you can only piss with the Mickey you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you don't comments like that are you ever just like oh no, my no it God. literally you know it goes like he came out with like a, what was it at our wedding oh my God oh Jesus my aunts and uncles were there and Church of Ireland, you know, and think, and friends and family on our side, like, and he came out with, oh, so, what was it you said about I, the dogs? I nearly died. Uh, I thought when I was writing the speech. Hang on. So, right. Let's just set the, set the scene. Is this yeah. at the top, top table? table. David stands David up to stands tell up. us 
speech. And what were you thinking of that? Were you thinking, ah, he's not going to embarrass me today? Or were you, was there a bit of it where you were going, Jesus, I hope he doesn't? I was just looking at my aunts and uncles from like Limerick and that and I was like, please don't do anything. And had they met him much before this? Only a couple of times. So and they didn't like, really my know. My uncle was at the top table and he, he married us as well. Uh, with our local parish priest and my uncle and the the, the rector uh, in Mount Rath and like he he loved David like he they all loved you like even Auntie Anne down in Limerick loved See, you I'm Catholic, he could say anything Christ. yeah well, it was a mix it was yeah and um, like Uncle Philip oh my God like. He is fairly, you know, he's very, he passed away, he's passed away since, but, um, you know, he, he didn't, he just took it over his shoulder, whatever you would say to him. Yeah, say he gets anything. away with it, doesn't he? he? It's a cheeky a, smile when he ch- says yeah. it. You know, and he, you know. he does it with my auntie Anne and like she's there, hmm, you know, the like, amount loving of, it. The amount of comments I've got this week about my arse. And really? I'm thinking like, now oh, I have a, because of what David now I have a yeah. complex. I have a complex about my arse now. And I'm I thinking, don't have to I walked in here last week, Vicky, and he was like, ooh, look at that tight little arse. <laughs> and I'm smiling, <laughs> right? And at the time I thought, ah, it's a bit of crack. Yeah. And now I'm thinking, do I need to be doing a few more squats or what's No, but going on? when you were telling me you do a thousand butt crunches every day <laughs> before you go to work every morning. A thousand. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He does. I eat a thousand he biscuits a day. Take them away. loose. <laughs> You don't do anything. I'm like that, not do you? a thing. I was yes. going to say. No, I eat too much chocolate. That's all that's wrong with my arse. <laughs> Come here, right? So let's go back to the wedding, right? Oh, yeah. You're at the top table, you're sweating, you're looking yeah. down at Auntie Jehoshaphat, and you're thinking, oh my God, don't embarrass me. What yeah. does he what say? What does he say? What you say it because you tell it better. I can't remember now, but it, it was, was about more in the line of uh, the first time I walked into Vicky's house, there I was in a Protestant house with Protestant family, Protestant dogs jumping up on top of me, and it just didn't go like a thought would <laughs> and I was trying to be mellow because I told jokes at weddings about riding on the middle of roads and just and a Catholic wedding they just go off like a tree everyone loves them but yeah. it was like half the crowd was like yeah they were just why because you mentioned Protestant dogs I think so yeah you know but like Uncle Philip never said anything to you afterwards you no, know no. he was still very happy with you you know ah yeah but what's the big what deal there though I don't see any big deal in it. That's why I always mention it because I think it's a lot of shy. But sure, if you're a Protestant family and you have a dog, surely the dog is a Protestant dog. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know, but it's just... I knew the first time I seen that dog, it always buried me. <laughs> <laughs> no, David. <laughs> it did. The dogs thought they were better than me and that was just that. I was there as a Protestant dog. Yeah, that's what he said to me actually when we first met up. He goes, I knew by you, the smell of Protestant off you. That's what he said to me when we first met. Like, yeah. What does a Protestant smell like? You. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love you. Thanks. Love you too. What was it like growing up as a Protestant? Um, was it any different? Well, look, at, you, you know, we went, we were sent to um, the National School in Mount Rath and obviously Camrys National School was just down the road. So I suppose our neighbours were kind of like, how come you don't go to school? You know, and it, Dad never really spoke about like the whole religion thing. That kind of only dawned on me when I was making my confirmation, which was at 12 years of age. So I didn't, we didn't obviously make first Holy communion. So it never, it never dawned on us. But my father would have been very religious. He would have studied like theology and philosophy and his twin brother, Uncle Philip, he went on to become a rector and later on canon and dean of Cashel or whatever. And his father was a rector. So it was in, you know, he always had it in the background, but he used to say, no, we don't need to go to church or any of that, you know. So. Were you ever embarrassed or anything? Or no, were, were never. Were ever, like, was it ever a crutch in school or anything like that? No, like, we were made aware in school that we didn't attend church. So we'd have a morning prayer every morning at nine o'clock. We'd go in. We'd have to stand up and say a prayer. Yeah. Well, we would have done that in secondary school. Yeah. But um, we would have gone to school, uh, gone back to school on a Sunday night for chapel. And anybody, everybody went. Oh, my God. That sounds yeah. like torture. Yeah. Well, well, I didn't mind it because I love, I love, I love the singing of it. I love in church singing hymns. Love the hymns. I love hymns. I love singing hymns. But um, what's your favourite hymn? Um, oh, God. Oh, come all ye faithful. Yeah, that's actually a nice one. Fairly. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks very much. She brought me to my own wedding, right, to a Protestant church. And I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> and I had no mind. idea what was happening. For your so, wedding? Where do my I own stand? Yeah. Didn't know where to stand. Didn't know what to do. Did you not have there a rehearsal? Was, no, well, we did. But we we did. did. It wasn't a full but rehearsal. But Start singing all these songs. And then yeah, at the end, I was like looking forwards to the kissing of the bride. 
That's the whole reason I'm there, right? This is what I paid for this party. In, in, for, the, the in for the me. No, but our, our reverend was, never announced there it. There was no kissing of the bride. Just yeah. put the hands up and throw them down and they're uh, off. Uh, yeah. What? Yeah, it was just, he was kind of like, you know, really kind of trying to kind of funk things up, I think. Funk things up by not allowing a little yeah. low shift. I'm mad for the shift. We were, yeah. waiting, we were waiting for it. I was waiting for it because I didn't realise. Obviously, I think it was on the summer. Well, I was on the summer. You know, David hasn't seen you in haven't seen you a couple 20 of days. hours. She was looking yeah. smoking hot. I, I, lucky I had tight underpants on because it was... <laughs> you did have I was tight mad, underpants on. I was mad for the shift and none of it. I was yeah. devastated. So when did you shift then? Oh, um, Jesus, there was some shifting done. Actually, <laughs> on, the, on the step of the church. Remember the horse and cart all the way over that I didn't want? The horse and cart. Remember oh, you mean you the, car? the car? <laughs> we had a lovely old vintage car. Oh, David, yeah. He I was hated so, it. I was, he like, was like, why did you go for this? But it was lovely. It was part of it. It was the whole vintage style wedding. And do you mind me asking, and you don't have to answer, what religion are the kids? Roman Catholic. Okay. Yeah. How did that decision come about? Do you want to talk about that? Well, when obviously when I got with David, you know, I'm Church of Ireland, David's Catholic and... Uh, do you remember that what you said to me actually when we were t- preparing for the wedding and mm. you were like, I don't think, um, and he was trying to be nice about it, I don't think now um, my aunts and uncles are going to want to sit in Church of Ireland Church like, you know, and I was like, okay, that's fine, I don't mind. I was just there thinking, you know, that's their own, that's their own choice or whatever, I'm not, I don't I don't give a shit. You yeah. Know? That's not what this is about anyway, it's about us, so. Uh, fully enough most of them all turned up it was mm. you were like I don't think I've ever seen you uncle. don't know what the older surely nobody when they, did, I was they, younger, didn't, they didn't go because it was the Church of Ireland when I no just no but he, he did worry okay. he worried you, right. you don't know what way people are, are going to act yeah and I remember when we were younger say we didn't know any of these people so they were neighbours that never hung with us. so right. you're thinking what's going on like what's yeah. happening but going back to like the kids, um, yeah, so obviously, you know, we got married and the first thing I wanted to do was take David's name. I obviously, I couldn't wait to take his name. I was delighted to take it. Right. You know, um, very proud to take the, the Cuddy name. And then we had Lily beforehand. We had planned Lil beforehand before any, you know, engagement or anything like that. Hmm. And, um, you know, obviously it kind of comes to the, you know, you get asked the question on the parents. Well, and they want to ask you nicely, you know, they want to cause any upset, like, like, where is the child going to be christened? I was always very straightforward with my parents, you know, she's going to be Roman Catholic, like, you know, she's going to be christened down in Camrys because we're both from Camrys. I feel I was kind of going to mass with David on and off or whatever, you know, I'd be more involved as in going to mass than I would to church um, in our local parish. And um, so I felt more, actually, I felt so much more at home in the Catholic church than I did in my own Church of Ireland church. Like that, we didn't attend church in Camrys, say the Church of Ireland church. Um, so we never really felt that we belonged as a family where we were living. And it was just the way it was. Is that because you were Protestant? Or why? Why did you not no, feel no, like a family there? As a Church of Ireland, as Church of Ireland, when we'd go to the odd church service, yeah. we never felt welcomed. Okay. I don't mean that in a bad way. You know, like I think in every parish there's cliques. You know, there's yeah, all the absolutely. ones that chew the altar rails. And, and in rest. every religion. Yeah. yeah. And then we'd come in, you know, there was, you know, at different stages, we'd have new rectors come on and they'd come out and visit. They were all excited starting off in their new posts and come on to church, you know. And so dad tried, but we never just, never felt like we were. And excuse my ignorance now, but is there envelopes? Like we get posted out the no. envelopes and then the priest come around looking for the envelope and then kind of depending on who brought the envelope, then there might be a bit of... How are you getting on? You can sit up the front here because... Yeah, no, like obviously in the Church of Ireland where we would have gone to church on and off when we were in primary school, we obviously went to church, you know, for the Christmas carol service, all that kind of stuff. Um, you, you know, we still have the pews with the doors, you know, and going back to, you know, local gentry when they were yeah. paying their way to the top of the church. That's Handy still... for the kids, by the way. <laughs> Keep them locked in. Yeah, but like that's still, the people still, like there's families still have their pew, you know. Um, oh right Yeah You know um, And that's the Cuddy pew but one, no, no, no 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 On no, the Church of Ireland side No but yeah. I'm, I know that yeah, now yeah. I know But that, yeah. that would be That family's well, pew yeah. One of the yeah. Nobody else be allowed in it No you'd, Would it be a row If someone it. stepped in You'd know not to What if I landed in there this, this weekend And I just said I want to go to Mass Where do I stand 
in in our church. Yeah, is there is there general visitor pews? No, we see it's not meant to be like that, obviously. But just families have is it still their like that? pews. I don't know if it okay. is. It was when I was. Yeah. But it's just, just like going to the pub. That's Jimmy's chair. You don't so, sit. Yeah. You don't sit You're in Jimmy's like chair. Yeah. yeah. But do they pay for him? No, you you pay you pay a fee every year towards the church, towards you know each family, but my father never did. He didn't agree with it. Well, sure, there you go. That's why you're well, an outsider. Another, another <laughs> yeah. uh, pay up, man. Another one of the main reasons the the kids were Roman Catholic was all Vicky. None of your brothers and sisters had had kids yet, and all I had loads of um, brothers and stuff that had kids. And so all their cousins and all their friends were all going to be in Camrys anyway, and we live in Camrys. Like they were so. always going to go. We were always going to get back home to Camrys. We were living in Mount Trath, so we were always going to go back home to Camrys. So obviously they were going to go to Camrys National School. Yeah. Um, you know, and it never, I, it never bothered me that they would be raised Roman Catholic. Were you worried about disappointing your parents? Absolutely not. Did you disappoint them? No, my father. They were fully supportive. Yeah, yeah, because you see, that's lovely. Yeah, like we're. I come from a Church of Ireland family. There is how many two sisters? Eleven or twelve? Twelve of us. Totally. And we're all with Roman Catholics. Yeah, because uh, my mom is from Derry, from Derry City Centre, and she grew up during the Troubles and she was down throwing petrol bombs on Bloody Sunday. But her brother married a Protestant and then her kids were Protestants and they married Catholic. So it's, what you're talking about is very familiar to me, yeah. but there was, ne- there was never a divide in our no, house. There, you just got on with it. But we were never told about this divide, obviously, until we started becoming, you know, got older and more educated. And, you know, you were hearing about it in school and whatever, history and all the rest. Yeah. But like my kids don't know about a divide. Like they'd have heard the word Protestant Church of Ireland. Like now Lily will say, Mum is Church of Ireland and Dad is Catholic. But they don't, there's it means no, nothing to it them. means nothing. Because yeah, my first experience of it was we were in, in mass or I think we were at a wedding in Derry and we all went up for the communion. Yeah. But the Protestants just went up for a blessing. Yeah. And I was yeah. going, why didn't they get why didn't he take the what's I going know, on there? Yeah. Yeah. And that was my, that was the first thing. Because we were growing up in a generation where the news would be on, the troubles were on, the yeah. Catholics and the Protestants. So there was a narrative behind it that made you think, is there something here? Yeah. Is there? But nowadays, no one. But my granddad, if I wore anything red, white and blue, he'd tell me to go up and take it off. Really? Go away. He'd, it... he'd say red, white and blue should be torn up in two. Yeah. And if I had any red, white and blue on me, he he would absolutely... Now, he was an absolute gentleman and I idolised him and he'd done everything. He spoiled me rotten. But he would have ripped it off my back. Yeah. Would have been fair or um, embarrassing if you'd just been had underwear on. <laughs> <laughs> There's two or three podcasts in you, Vicky, for sure. Absolutely. Definitely. For a lady that was so nervous I told her. In, I told her. Yeah. Vicky is... So good to talk. I really enjoyed that, honestly. Oh, thank yeah, you. and it was brilliant. And he's lucky to have you because you're such a kind, caring, compassionate, yeah. uh, understanding person. And honestly, uh, I hope he knows how lucky he is to have you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thanks a million. David, I do. David, I do. Don't fuck it up. I don't. I won't fuck it up. No. I know I won't fuck it up. No, <laughs> not he's in, in it for not inten- not intentionally yeah. anyway. There's some games you don't get to play unless you're all in. Mm. Marriage is one of them, I think. <laughs> what's uh, what's the next plan for the podcast? You put you put the feeders out last week saying, you know, anyone that wants to get in touch, get in touch. Now I wasn't expecting the volumes. I know you said. I told you you're yeah. playing you're playing with fire. Yeah. No, I'm I'm still getting back to people. I've got back to some people and yeah, it's heavy. I I wasn't expecting the heaviness of it. But I'll get to some of it. The next podcast is going to be with Shane. Shane Flynn is coming out. That's going to be health, mental health and exercise and stuff. Um, stuff that I know nothing about, so I'm not going to let someone else explain. And um, I think I'll have to go through a few with you just because uh, it's a bit heavy. <laughs> I, I got back to a few people and it was like topics that I just don't feel that I have the skill to do them justice. Yeah. You know, real heavy stuff. But um, plenty of other. I've other. taken a leaf out of your book since I spoke to you last and I've just stopped going into my DMs. Just, I don't go in anymore. It helps. Yeah. Oh, big time. Big time. Because you do take it on, like. Mm. And you can't, you, you know, you can't. You can't be responsible for everyone. Yet, and you have to mind yourself. Yeah, and you, but, you only have you. Yeah. That, that's why I, I have Vicky. Sometimes I give the phone to Vicky. I go, just do that for a while. Cause yeah, I, you I, can help people and there's a ways of doing it. But the volume that you get yeah. is overwhelming. Yeah. It really is. What's, um... What's the worst you've got? The worst message I've got? Mm. What message has took you 
Oh, I'm just so stressed out now I'm going to bed. Um, the time Ashley Murphy was murdered, I was very close to packing it all in. I was very close to just saying, I was playing a football match and I, so that morning I got a phone call and it, 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 talking about it now, it's nothing, but I got a phone call the morning after she was murdered and I was asked to take part in a run yeah. um, for a, a guard that lost his life. And I said, yeah, no problem. I have two guards in the family and I, w- I do my own charity things. So I will do my own. I did a run last Christmas for MS, you know, and, and I sold hats then the Christmas before that and I donated the money. And I like to do my own charity things and mm. set up my own things and get all the money in and give all that money to the charity and know where it's going. So when I raised the money for MS, I made sure it stayed in Mayo. I didn't raise money for MS Ireland and it'd be whittled down and every, everyone yeah. get 10 euros. Uh, my mum has MS and I wanted, we raised over 4,000 and I wanted the 4,000 to, to go make to, a difference. to go to her community to make a difference to this little community. And I told everyone that at the start. You know, if, if you were donating in Longford or Wexford, you were donating to my mum's community of mm. MS. But um, I just find, number one, the volume of messages you get asking to support charities is overwhelming. Mm. I would get somewhere between 10 and 15 per day. Yeah, and go fund me. Please share this. Please do this. Please sign up to that. Please do whatever. So as a rule, I just say, no, I'm doing my own one, whatever that is going to be, and I'll, I'll stick to that. So I got this phone call that morning just saying, would you do this run with this? And I said, I will. And I think because I have two guards in my own family, it kind of, I said, that must be why I connected to it. And I said, I'll do it. And he said, and is there any chance you'd share it on your page? And I said, no problem. And again, like that, I wouldn't share many things on my page, but I shared that that morning and oh my God, I didn't think about it. I just didn't think about it. I just thought I was doing a good thing. Mm. But it was the day after this girl was murdered and she was out for a run. Mm. And then Alan Clark comes on the next morning and shares, looking forward to doing this run in two weeks time. Well, I just got dog's abuse, absolutely dog's abuse, that it was the wrong time. And uh, I wasn't cons- considering anyone else and you know, the poor family and this, that and the other. And that evening, then I had to launch a competition for this um, island that uh, an island experience that was booked in three months ago. And I they just said they wanted it on that date or whatever. And that was the date I had to run. And again, it was scheduled in to go and I didn't think about it. So that evening I went on Instagram and the messages. I just felt like the biggest piece of shit in the world. I think everyone on social media got a tsunami of messages at that time. And I had a match at eight o'clock and I rang, I rang my friend and I said to him, um, she's I'm not fit to get out of the car. I, I was looking at the pitch and I was in the car reading my messages and I said, I don't know what to do. Do I delete my page? Do I delete the messages? And at one point of the match, I was standing up on the pitch and the ball hit my legs and I wasn't thinking. Yeah. I was standing looking at the grass thinking. And I was going to leave the match and go out to the car and delete my page. And I, that, that to me then was, I just thought that was... And now when you look back, you think, I didn't do anything wrong. I was yeah. only trying to help some, yeah. some other charity. And somebody else then decided that I was a piece of shit. That people just sit there and that's the most important topic in their life. And everyone should be putting that up there the same as they do. Yeah. That was a really weird time. But, but I, I, I got loads of messages saying I should be talking about it. And I, was there, I wasn't using someone else's misfortune. This yeah. awful thing happened to be virtuous on my page. And I got really insulted when I was getting messages saying that I should talk to my son or talk to stuff about this. Since that week, Instagram has changed a lot for me. I used to really enjoy and I do enjoy it. And Milan, I was in Milan last weekend for anyone that doesn't know me or isn't following me. And that kind of that reignited a kind of a love for Instagram in me. But since that week, uh, I got dog's abuse for walking the dog. I was out walking the dog one night and I was told I was showing off and uh, how I was showing off my ability to be able to go and walk the dog on my own. And I'm not saying one or two now. I got a lot, mm, like a, go- a good few. Uh, another night then, my dog is really well trained. She's 12. She's a 12 year old Springer Spaniel, highly intelligent dog. I know what her capabilities are and I can cross the road and leave her on one side of the road. And she knows not to come yeah. until I give her a nod. And there's signals and there's code words and whatever. And then two days later, I did that uh, where she waits one side of the crossing and I go the other side of the crossing. And again, I was told that I was putting my dog's life in danger and that she was going to be killed and I, I had no concern for the dog and blah, blah, blah. But ever since that week, 
I have been getting an absolutely insane amount of abuse. Yeah. For but you, ha- shit, you for have to learn from that. Shit. And you have to try and learn that you have to stop worrying about the opinions of other people. Yeah. And you, you really realize how useless and non important they are when you go to try and pay your bills with them. Yeah. Because people are just, everyone has an opinion. And how ignorant and how obnoxious does someone have to be to think that they can go through life without being offended? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I spoke about it on my own podcast s- slightly. I didn't go into it in an awful lot of detail, but I just said I wasn't going into my DMs anymore. But then the amount of people that started messaging here and the guy who hosts it with me, telling him nice things to say to me, you know, and he was sending me screenshots saying, tell mm-hmm. Alan. And there's these stories like, I got a story where there was a girl listening to my stories as she was going down for open heart surgery and her mum was holding the phone above her watching my stories before she went down and when she came back up she wanted to watch my stories after the surgery and I just thought fuck everyone yeah, yeah. and even know? if that, that one person it. that's all I care about it. Yeah. that girl and I messaged the mum then just to say how did she get on or whatever and you know I'd love to meet her or talk mm. to her you know but the mum obviously didn't want to let it be known publicly or whatever yeah. um, but I just thought that, after, that's good enough for me while, now after a while there's weight in that absolutely like, yeah. that's the stuff that weighs on you that's real stuff yeah I'm, but it can weigh on you very heavily mm. like just last night that message I got from that young lad yeah. like that, that weighed on the two of us yeah. heavy he was after him and his brother he used to watch my stories all the time and the brother lost his life and Watching my stories reminds him and he was listening to the podcast and sort of giving a kick up the hole and you're there, fuck, yeah. you have a tougher life than me, buddy. Yeah. So, you know, you're, you're looking up to me, don't look up to me. You know, you, like, that's mad. And you're there, what, what do you do? You know, I'll yeah. send you a few t-shirts and you're like, what's that? Yeah. You know, you, you feel like you're just, if you message back, oh, thanks for that, you're going through all the hardship. You feel like a... What yeah, the imposter probably, or something? It probably meant a lot for him to reach out. I mean, like he used the word therapy, like it was therapeutic for him to listen to David because he felt that he still hadn't he hadn't lost his brother completely. He felt like he nearly had a little bit of his brother still from listening to David. Like, wow. you know, like it's. But when you when you have that the experience you had and you have that two or three times a week, some of them really heavy ones. Mm. And then you listen to the shite with two Johnnies. You're there, fuck them all. Yeah. All you need is that few people that follow you, that follow you that are important. And that's all you need. I just don't understand how people can slide into your DMs and say things to you. Like, I just don't get but this. But I don't get because what like, people get from doing that. They wouldn't say it to your face. No, they the wouldn't. The last night I put up a video, it was snowing outside the front of my house. Lovely, yeah. So I went to the front door and took a video and at the front of my house there's two pillars. And somebody commented, ha, fake pillars. <laughs> Fake pillars. But that's people that have nothing better to do with themselves. But it wasn't a troll account. This was somebody that follows me for years. Yeah. And I'm just thinking to myself, what kind of person are you that you'll comment on the pillars on the front of someone's mm. house? Can you ever imagine yourself driving past a house going, oh, fake pillars? But that, hey, that's social media. Like, Ricky, Ricky Gervais has this perfect bit. I, I think I said it before. Uh, social media, you have to, and DMs and messages get is exactly like going into... Uh, a big Leicester Square over in England or wherever it's called and there's a big signpost that says guitar lessons and a phone number underneath and someone going I don't want your fucking guitar lessons <laughs> fuck you <laughs> that's what it's like yeah, yeah. that's social media yeah. and you have to understand that that's what it is if you're walking down the street and some <laughs> homeless bum crawls out of a bin with fucking piss and shit stains all over him and goes you're a fucking dickhead you just laugh and go you poor who are you yeah. But because it's social media, you imagine them as you. And you're there thinking this is a higher authority telling you because they know. Yeah. Because all everyone does is just sit around judging everyone. It's like the two Johnnies. It's like that politician. How, like, who do you think you are? Sent down from above to put judgment on people. Like, uh, uh, is their life perfect? It's just life. We're all fucking up making mistakes every day. And that's what we all do and will do. Forever. That's it. <laughs> that's it. No one is perfect and everyone makes mistakes and I've made a load of mistakes. But yeah. the problem is, you know, <laughs> you have to just own them. Own them and get on and, mm. and get on with it. What's the point in in thinking about it morning, noon and night going, Oh fuck, I wish I didn't like yeah, it'll it'll weigh on you for a few days. Yeah. But you have to say, Right, I fucked up there and try and make it right and just get on with it. Like I wore denim change. shoes once. You can't turn back time. <laughs> I had denim shoes once. 
That's a mistake I'm never going to live down. Wouldn't be a mistake if you were in Milan now last <laughs> weekend, from what I've seen. The, <laughs> the lads at the high heel. The women will be all over you. Yeah. Really? Oh, God. I've seen a few, they will show me. Those lads out Style, there with four yeah. inch heels, yeah, and a slit for the big toe. Oh, <laughs> they fucking were, mental. They were Isn't sick. It? That is How crazy. How uncomfortable would that be? When I was um, you younger, th- I only, I, I was wearing clothes. I used to love wearing clothes. It was only wearing what people would tell you to wear. And then I went through the largest period of my life only wearing clothes because it was illegal not to. I didn't give a shit. Because <laughs> I was fat. I was getting clothes that were too big for me. They were too small for me. I remember sitting there going to some communion or confirmation that I'd be on. And Shaviki was always smoking hot. And there, there I was. Still working, is. Still working, is. There oh I am working, working seven days a week. Fucking morbidly obese. You know that picture that I have at home? With oh, yeah. Big, <laughs> fat, <laughs> big hair and fat. And well, I, I, think he, I think he looked well enough. But, for and, sure. but I look like at a that, Yeti? I look at that picture I and I go, <laughs> I go, fair play to him. Like he, he gave up everything to just work. You know, fuck it. And right. he didn't care. But you'd care sometimes when someone would go, oh, look at tits and cuddy. Yeah, he gets very offended with his... I, I, remember, I remember one lad and I met him. He was a lorry driver. Nice lad. Fierce nice lad. But this is the way guys go on. And I've been working all the time. I'm eating shy how filling stations. And I was fat. I knew I was fat. No mm. one had to tell me I was fat. And then he goes, oh, look at the tits on you. <laughs> and he starts shaking your tits. Shaking your tits. Like you really let yourself go. Like what the fuck? Like they're there. Jesus Christ. So I didn't feel bad already. Yeah, you came home and you were like a manic that day. I was bullying. <laughs> I was there. Fucking tits. <laughs> Need to get yeah. rid of tits. But there's an Irish thing there that though I don't think we should ever get rid of to a certain extent. Like I, I was in the airport last Saturday morning and a fellow says to me, Christ, how long did it take you to do your hair this morning? <laughs> yeah. And I love that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you know? no, no one was, it depends who's saying it to you. Exactly. So yeah, if your own yeah. or your friends, I'd never mind. Should we, we tell each other that the whole time mm. all my brothers and friends were always leering each other. Because yeah. that's, that's how you, you don't get ahead of yourself. Like I will never get notions. <laughs> it's not possible for me no, to get notions know, no. with my family. I don't know. Seriously, like, you'd be just cut to the ground in a <laughs> second. Yeah. A second. That's why there's no celebrities in Ireland. Do you know? No. There's just no cele- You couldn't be a celebrity in Ireland if you tried. Exactly. Like, if Niall Horan walked in there, it'd be like, sit down there, you bollocks. <laughs> yeah, probably. Do you know? Yeah. The richest one, the yeah. richest, most successful men in Ireland, you'd be just like, come in there. What are you wearing there? Yeah. You know? There's a lot of people in Ireland you could, that you can't talk to. They can't have a conversation. What do you mean? Um, I'm after meeting so many people now in the last two years. Just doing what we're doing now. So social media and you're talking to people in advertising. And you're talking to people that you're trying to do business with. Yeah. And you're walking in thinking that you're the uneducated one. That you're the one that's not verbally capable of having these conversations. Yeah. And you're talking to him for five minutes, you're there. You are fucking Egypt. You are as dumb as a plank. You just have a title. Yeah. And you don't know where to go from there because you don't know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I just know I don't do it you. So you're back to square one. Yeah. And it's just meeting after meeting after meeting. And I'm there. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm an idiot. But then I've met people like you and people like, you know, other people that are in the game that you go, all right, this person's not. There's not everyone is a fucking Egypt. But it is a snake pit. No, but like I, you're like they're a bit of a spoofer, is what you're trying to say. Like they're a bit, they're spoofers, a little bit out of their depth. Yeah, but they they get through fine. Yeah. They're able to get through the whole thing fine. Yeah, like yeah, some amount of fucking spoofers at. I know what you mean. Like I come across a lot of marketing experts. Yeah, and you're just like you've got 198 followers. I know. <laughs> like, and they, they want to grow your page. And they're like, hey, yeah, give me a shout. I'll really boost your page <laughs> yeah. for you. Boost your own fucking page. I know. <laughs> and then give him back to me. Yeah. And the fact that everything's an algorithm. Like how many um, G-strings and sweatpants have you been asked to advertise on your page because they fit your profile? Yeah, You're exactly. the perfect person for the job. You'd look really nice in these yoga pants. Yeah. <laughs> I get loads of them. It's fierce for me. Yeah. It's fierce. yeah We'd yeah, love to fierce. send you a yeah. pair or of jewelry. our yoga pants. Or jewellery. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ankle bracelets A couple of weeks ago want, Someone wanted me to advertise Ankle bracelets That's look good isn't it? Isn't Right it? We better wrap it up Or we'll have nothing To talk about next week Yeah So anyway Thanks a million For tuning in And I hope you all Got to know my Beautiful wife Because everyone Always wants to know What she's life, like <laughs> And then Thanks Alan And Colin Thanks a million And I'll see you next week
Thanks a million for listening. Appreciate it. Good luck. <laughs>